This is session one of three. This is a City and Guilds accredited course uh, delivered via a webinar in three one hour sessions suitable for flexibility of learning. You will have been emailed or sent a workbook uh, that accompanies this course, which we strongly recommend that you have printed out for your use and reference throughout. Any questions you may have, please type them in the chat window and I will answer them at various points during the webinar. If you want to change the font size, you can do this by clicking the options button in the chat window and going to font. I will be staying online at the end of this session. If anyone wishes to ask any further questions, please stay online and do so then. This course is designed for anybody that works with Legionella um, or is exposed to Legionella during their work. This is anyone from carrying out the weekly flushing to management. This will give you the awareness of Legionella bacteria to either carry out your role or to continue to further courses for the responsible person, duty holder, landlords or maintenance staff. We do this by covering three sessions. The first session, the session we are doing today, is all about Legionella bacteria, how the bacteria becomes a risk to humans and the health implications of the bacteria if we do in fact contract anything from it. The second session is about the approved code of practice or what we call in industry the Bible for Legionella management and control. And this will help you comply with the legal side of things such as Health and Safety at Work Act and COSH regulations. The third and final session is how to control these risks. So how to control the Legionella bacteria in your systems in order to reduce and minimise the risk to humans. So in this session today, in this next hour, we will be covering case studies. So previous outbreaks from Legionnaires um, and previous illnesses from various other illnesses caused by the bacteria. Lessons hopefully learnt, but you know, cases are still happening. We'll look at Legionella bacteria itself, uh, what it likes, what it doesn't like, um, and how it multiplies and how we can control that. We will look in more depth at the illnesses that it causes. It isn't just Legionnaire's disease, it can cause other illnesses too. The symptoms that this il these illnesses cause and also the susceptibility of certain individuals to this bacteria and some people are more at risk than others. We will then look at routes of transmission, how we actually contract these illnesses from the bacteria, the medical aspects of having the bacteria in our system. And we'll then go on to look at the conditions that favour the proliferation of this bacteria. And all that means is, is there are certain conditions within a water system that the bacteria likes and then is allowed to multiply into large numbers, which then increases the risk to humans. And then last of all, we will look at forms of aerosol generation Various different areas, um, aerosol generations have different risks associated with them in order to us, for us to contract Legionnaire's disease. Once we've covered all these sessions um, today, once we've covered all these topics, there is a multiple choice question bank at the end of this session, which you have 10 minutes to complete. It contains eight multiple choice questions. Um, and you need to get six out of the eight correct in order to pass this session. So why do we need to control this particular bacteria in our water systems? Well, we know it can cause death, it can cause illnesses. So there's a moral reason to want to actually prevent this bacteria to get into our systems and infect people. It doesn't do the company profile or image much good if there is an outbreak or if somebody falls ill or even dies. And then following that, there's obviously a criminal or civil action cases, um, high profile ones. Doesn't do the company image very good, but also will cover fines and possible imprisonment. So we need to protect building users. There's a financial reason, um, prevent sick days, prevent compensation, claims and fines 
And it's also a legal requirement for us to have to do this. The legal requirements um, are covered by the Health and Safety at Work Act, uh, control of substances hazardous to health. Legionnaire's disease is reportable under RIDDLE, which is reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrence regulations. And also any property or building that has a cooling system, then it's a legal requirement to have the system registered with the local authorities under the notification of cooling towers and evaporative condenser regulations.